prefaces of the Ocean of Theosophy. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Kirk Ziegler, Ogden, Utah, voiceovers by Kirk.com. The Ocean of Theosophy by William Q. Judge. Preface. An attempt is made in the pages of this book to write of theosophy in such a manner as to be understood by the ordinary reader. Bold statements are made in it upon the knowledge of the writer, but at the same time it is to be distinctly understood that he alone is responsible for what is therein written. The Theosophical Society is not involved in nor bound by anything said in the book, nor are any of its members any the less good theosophists because they may not accept what he has set down. The tone of settled conviction which may be thought to pervade the chapters is not the result of dogmatism or conceit, but flows from knowledge based upon evidence and experience. Members of the Theosophical Society will notice that certain theories or doctrines have not been gone into. That is because they could not be treated without unduly extending the book and arousing needless controversy. The subject of will has received no treatment inasmuch as that power or faculty is hidden, subtle, undiscoverable as to essence, and only visible in effect. As it is absolutely colorless and varies in moral quality in accordance with the desire behind it, as also it acts frequently without our knowledge, and as it operates in all the kingdoms below man, there could be nothing gained by attempting to inquire into it, apart from the spirit and the desire. The writer invented none of it, discovered none of it, but has simply written that which he has been taught and which has been proved to him. It therefore is only a handing on of what has been known before. William Q. Judge Preface to the 10th Edition Some 22 years ago, the first edition of The Ocean of Theosophy was published by its author, William Q. Judge. Since that time, thousands of books dealing with theosophy have been published by more or less prominent students of theosophy. But unfortunately for the public, none of these show the knowledge, grasp, and range which is so evident in the present volume. And still more unfortunately, the methods pursued by these latter-day writers have served to obscure the fact of the existence of an exposition of theosophy written by a teacher of that science of life. As the author's preface shows, the book was written in such a manner as to be understood by the ordinary reader. The simplicity of the terms used, however, should not mislead the reader into thinking that the work is an elementary one, for behind and within every statement there is a depth of meaning that the careless and superficial fail to perceive. It is really a simplified textbook of the fundamental teachings of theosophy, and is found by the students of the secret doctrine to be a true abridgment of that great work, and a wonderful aid in its comprehension. It was written with that end in view by the only one competent to do so and is therefore earnestly recommended to every student of theosophy. The passage of years has served to show not only the value of this little book, but the status of Mr. Judge as a teacher. Everything he has written bears impress of his deep knowledge to every real student of theosophy. Even the ordinary reader cannot fail to perceive that only one who knows could have so applied theosophy to the circumstances and conditions of everyday human existence. There are but few books whose issuance is due to Mr. Judge. These few, however, are most valuable aids to the student in living the theosophic life. Letters that have helped me are two small volumes containing letters written to students with comments by the compiler. Echoes from the Orient is a broad outline of theosophical doctrines, 64 pages. The Bhagavad Gita is a rendition much better and clearer than any literal translation extant. Patanjali's Yoga Amorphisms is an ancient treatise on the soul and its powers, from which modern psychology has much to learn. In addition, Mr. Judge wrote a great number of articles dealing with the philosophy in its practical application to daily life. These can be found in the magazine Theosophy. The earnest student will do well to study conjointly the writings of H.P. Blavatsky and William Q. Judge. From them he will learn theosophy, pure and simple, will recognize the community of knowledge, and complete accord that existed between them, 
and will more fully appreciate the mission and nature of those two personages. Robert Cosby End of Prefaces